think this is big. Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. So recently a telephone call between Donald Trump and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was leaked by Kennedy's son. Now, some of it was just political stuff, which we have no interest in on this channel whatsoever. But there were also some false claims made about vaccines by Trump. And we are interested in that. So in this video, Cindy and I will be going back to the science and explaining why he is wrong. But first, let's have a listen. I agree with you, man. Something's wrong with that whole system. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's a doctor's you find. Remember, I said I want to do small doses. Small doses. When you, when you feed a baby, Bobby, uh, a, a vaccination that has like 38 different vaccines, and it looks like it's meant for a horse, not a, you know, 10 pound or 20 pound baby. It looks like you're giving, you should be giving a horse this. this and you, do you ever see the size of it, right? You know, it's just massive. And then you see the baby all of a sudden starting to change radically. I've seen it too many times. And then you hear that it doesn't have an impact, right? But you and I talked about that a long time ago. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here. Let's start with the claim that the vaccine size is massive. The needle length is chosen so that it will be long enough to reach the muscle, but not long enough to go further and potentially damage nerves. For infants aged 1 to 12 months, that means the needle will be 1 inch long or 2.5 centimetres. Now, most people wouldn't think an inch was big. That actually reminds me of a joke. Why are women bad at gauging distances? Because they are constantly being told that this is eight inches. But back to the vaccines. What about the amount of vaccine in a syringe? Well, the maximum quantity for any vaccine given to children is 0.5 millilitres. Again, most people wouldn't think this was a lot. That reminds me of a joke, but I've already told you that one. Let's have a look at the other thing that Trump alluded to. The suggestion that children are getting too many vaccines at once. This is a common anti-vaxxer talking point that is totally bollocks and demonstrates that anti-vaxxers are clueless when it comes to immunology. Anti-vaxxers think that being exposed to a number of vaccines at once will overwhelm the immune system. To start with, children are exposed to a large number of viruses and bacteria on a daily basis. So antigen exposure from vaccines is just a small proportion of the antigens that they are exposed to. Furthermore, even if we just look at vaccines, the number of vaccines you receive is not directly related to the number of antigens you are exposed to. An antigen is a substance that invokes an immune response. In the case of a vaccine, it does this in a way that doesn't cause a disease that is usually associated with it. This means that when your body is later exposed to the same or a similar antigen from a virus or bacteria, it is already armed to deal with the invader. The important thing to know, though, is that a virus or bacteria is not just one antigen. They contain a large number of antigens with bacteria containing more than viruses because they're bigger. The majority of antigens are proteins, but some are carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. Each antigen also contains a number of epitopes, and different antibodies target different epitopes. Now, the earliest vaccines that were developed were based on whole viruses or whole bacteria cells. This meant they contained large numbers of antigens. 
But as technology has got better, we have been able to identify the key antigens necessary for an immune response. And this has led to vaccines with a lower number of antigens. This table comes from a scientific paper co-written by Dr. Paul Offit and a number of other scientists and doctors. And it shows the number of antigens contained in the vaccines that children typically received at different time periods. In 1900, the only vaccine routinely given to children was a smallpox vaccine. And this contained approximately 200 different proteins or antigens. In 1960, diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis and polio had been added to the vaccine schedule. And this meant that the number of antigens increased to approximately 3,217. And I checked my vaccine card and these are all the vaccines that I got when I was a kid. By 1980, smallpox had been eradicated around the world. And so the smallpox vaccine was no longer given. But measles, mumps and rubella were. This meant the total number of antigens was slightly decreased at approximately 3,041. By 2000, a number of other vaccines were added to the schedule. But the whole cell pertussis vaccine was replaced by the acellular pertussis vaccine, which reduced the number of antigens in that vaccine from 3,000 down to 2 to 5. This meant that by 2000, most children were only exposed to between 123 and 126 antigens, less than what they were exposed to from the smallpox vaccine in 1900. There are now a few extra vaccines on the schedule, but children are still exposed to a much lower number of antigens from vaccination than they were in 1960. There have also been a number of scientific studies showing that antigen exposure from vaccines definitely does not have a negative impact on the immune system. For instance, in this study here, they randomised children to either receive their first vaccination on their 60th day of life or to receive it on their 90th day of life. They then compared the morbidity of children in the third month of their life. This means that for that month, they were comparing vaccinated children with unvaccinated children. So what did they find? Children who weren't vaccinated were more likely to suffer from coughing, rhinitis, restlessness, vomiting, rash and pain. Another study looked at whether being exposed to multiple vaccines in the first 23 months of life would have an effect on non-vaccine targeted infections over the next two years. This forest plot here summarises their results. As you can see, all the confidence intervals crossed the vertical line. This means that the number of antigens that a child was exposed to had no effect on their chances of being infected with pathogens not targeted by the vaccines. In other words, vaccination does not negatively impact the immune system. And of course, it provides protection against the serious diseases covered by the vaccines. But Trump also tried to claim that children change after receiving the vaccine and seemed to imply that this was a result of getting lots of vaccines. Well, a study has also looked at this. This is a study here. They looked at the number of antigens that children received and what effect, if any, this had on neurological and psychological symptoms at age 7 to 10 years. The outcomes they looked at included general intellectual function, speech and language, verbal memory, fine motor coordination, attention and executive function, and behaviour regulation. And they looked at whether any of these were associated with 
the number of antigens that children had been exposed to up to seven months, up to 12 months, and up to 24 months. In most cases, there was no association whatsoever. So children who had low vaccine antigen exposure were no different than children who had high vaccine antigen exposure. The one exception was attention and executive function. In this case, children who had high vaccine antigen exposure at 24 months performed better than children who didn't. However, the p-value here is only 0.02. So this could be a chance finding. Importantly, though, higher vaccine antigen exposure was not associated with any neurological or psychological symptoms in children. So in summary, Donald Trump has a very distorted view of what is considered big. And his claims about childhood vaccines are total bollocks. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared, or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or little sleepy Cindy here a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to join the cool kids and stay informed, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.